Thank you, Tonya, for that introduction. My topic today is contract negotiation, the do's and don'ts. And uh, thank you to Poonam for inviting me to give this talk. And my qualification to give this talk is because I moved from a major academic center to a large private hospital system a uh, year ago. And uh, I believe she thought I would be good at this. So thank you. So my disclaimer is that the information here is compiled using cumulative experiences. I'd especially like to acknowledge the Women in Cardiology Facebook group, which gave me many pointers for this talk. Remember that studies have shown that only 7% of women negotiated salaries. Women are more accommodating, they try to preserve relationships, and we try to say, I think you know, and we end up with 78 cents to a dollar. And you know what I mean. So you're offered your dream job. The salary looks great. The vacation package is ideal. You're pretty happy. But a job is way, than, way more than dollars and vacation. And also, nothing is true if it's not in your contract. Why do you need to have things in your contract? Because leadership changes. The person you speak to today will not be there in two years. And if there's no documentation, it didn't happen. The financial status of group can change. For example, during COVID, all hospital systems took a big financial hit. Reimbursement can change. If nothing else, because you don't want to be told in three years, did I really say that? Or worse, I think you may have misunderstood. Or even worse, you didn't meet some of our expectations. So while you're waiting for the contract, get ready. Find a good contract attorney, speak to your peers, your seniors. Go buy a good recommendation, speak to more than one if you need to. Your attorney should be quick, they should be dependable, and they should have a reasonable fee. Then you make a list of absolute no's, things you will not negotiate on, things you will not budge on. And then you make a list of things that you're willing to give in on. When the contract arrives with its 150 pages, read it. Once you're done with that, get in touch with your contract attorney right away. So for the purposes of this talk, I'd like to break down the contract into compensation, female specific factors, time allocation, and support. And again, compensation is not the most important factor in a job, but because that's what we speak about mostly, I'll start with that. Understand what the salary expectations are. Look at the MGMA or AAMC salary numbers. Everyone usually gets a guaranteed salary during the first one, two or three years. See what that duration is. And during that salary guarantee period, if you reach a certain productivity, do you get a bonus? And how much is that? What is the compensation following the guarantee period? If it's an RVU-based salary, what is the RVU value? Do you get a sign-on bonus? Do you get a moving allowance or loan forgiveness? And remember that a sign-on bonus or moving allowance are one-time payments, so it's always more beneficial to negotiate on the salary because that's a recurring payment. And also, moving allowances and sign-on bonuses are taxable. Look at vacation. How many days? How many weeks? CME, how about how much time do you get? How many dollars? Is there a partnership track? And very important, do you get malpractice with a tail? What are the female specific points? The most important is related to maternity leave. How much maternity leave does the group offer? What's the, do you get paid during that time? Do you have to make up the call that would be missed during that time? And it may be that you're only getting four weeks of maternity leave and no pay during that time and you have to even make up your call. And it is not okay, but at least you know ahead of time what you will be getting into. And when you have a family, can you adjust your schedule as needed for breastfeeding or pediatrician appointments or kids' performances and graduations? You'd be surprised about the number of times elementary school has events for parents at 10.30 in the morning which means the entire clinic schedule has to be canceled. What is the RVU value? The dollar per RVU has to be the same for everyone. 
there have been many instances that women got paid a lower dollar, dollar figure per, per RVU than males. So make sure that you get paid the same as others and it is in your contract. Time allocation. How is time allocated amongst the group? How many consult weeks? How many flow weeks? Does everyone have equal call? How about office hours? What's the time for patient? New patients versus old? How, is, how are new patients allocated? How about lab availability for procedurist? How much lab time are you getting? If you are an imager, how much MRI time are you getting? And regarding call, be very, very careful. Someone told me that they were told they, their call is about once a month. It turned out it was Q3, but on the calendar month, it happens about once a month mostly. So be very careful about what the call schedule is. And when you're on call, how many hospitals do you cover? What are your service locations? Outreach is something you've got to be very careful about. How about administrative time? Are there time value units that would convert to RVUs? Are you going to be financially reimbursed? Look at the non-compete duration. What's the distance for the non-compete? Would the VA or a Kaiser system be excluded with a non-compete because they are not in competition with the regular hospital system? What's the support you have? You have MAs, nurses, APPs, or scribes? If you don't have nurses, remember that MAs cannot quite call in prescriptions or discuss symptoms with patients, so that adds a big burden on the physician. So how do you negotiate? You find out the decision maker, not the recruiter, not the secretary, not the agent. It's the chief of staff, the main person of the group, chief medical officer, chief of the section, whoever it is that can decide for you is the person you need to talk with. You make an appointment with time to sit and discuss. Let's discuss some pearls for negotiation. So make your list for negotiations, things you need to discuss and make better. Start from easy to hard from their standpoint. For example, you talk about starting clinic at 8.30 versus 8 a.m., if that's something important to you, and you finish with your salary, which is something more difficult to discuss. Make a game plan with your attorney. How, practice how you will discuss this. It is very, very uncomfortable to negotiate, and that's why we went into medicine. But plan and practice and practice this negotiation. Be confident, warm, and friendly. If the negotiator is in a hurry, you just say, you're in a hurry, we can reschedule. Remember that this is a window to the future. Are they willing to listen? Are they respectful? Are they reasonable? And be confident and be prepared with all the information that you have. Be prepared to give up on some, but ask for more on other, other points if that's the case. It's a negotiation. For example, if you're not getting as much vacation time, can you get a little bit more CME time? And know that 50 to 100,000 sounds a lot as a trainee, but for an ideal work environment, there is no value. What comes out of a negotiation is not usually in the history books of the institution, but it is a reflection of your estimate of self-worth. When you're done with the investigation, follow up with an email with points discussed and agreed upon and those that are not agreed upon so far. Here are some phrases you can use. Thank you for making time. I'm glad we have a chance to sit down and discuss how we can work together. I am being more than fair to you in asking for A, B, and C. To have the confidence to move my family here, I will need this commitment from you. This is something that is very important to me and would really be hard for me to negotiate. So what, you, what don't you do? Get an attorney with no prior recommendation. Show up to the meeting unprepared. Believe that some things are completely non-negotiable. Actually, pretty much everything's negotiable. The nice guy slash gal theory. Oh, the president was so nice, you know, I completely believe what they say. I'm sure there are, but they might not be there or they may forget. Not sitting down the decision maker, giving up on an important aspect because you're uneasy discussing further. And most importantly, not listening to your gut feeling. If it doesn't sound right, 
it is not. Don't do this. And there are many resources you can use to empower yourself with knowledge. Thank you.